Welcome in Karibuni to a room of Zanzi, but today I'm going to share with you how I make baguette, which is also known as French bread. So over here I've got some all-purpose flour. You could do half and half with the bread flour. I also have some yeast and a mixture of sugar and salt and some warm water. Okay, to start with I'm going to mix my yeast and the warm water and keep it aside for about 10 minutes. And uh, once that's ready, I'm going to stir it a bit, add the sugar and salt. Now I have about six cups of flour here and I'm going to use about two, you can use two to two and a half, creating a very thick batter. Okay, and uh, this batter, we're going to ferment it for about three to four hours. This is what's going to give the bread the that particular taste, okay? So um, you're going to cover it and leave it for three to four hours. Okay, as you can see here, my batter, it's got all the air bubbles from the fermentation. And uh, I'm going to start adding the flour as I mix and knead at the same time. Um, a little b uh, at a time, about three fourths a cup to one cup at a time until I finish all the flour. Okay, so you can do this in a stand mixer if you wish, but uh, for the sake of those who don't have a mixer, I decided to do it by hand. So, as you can see, and um, Okay, so now I finish my flour and uh, you can continue in the bowl if you want to, but I prefer to use a flat surface to knead. It's easier for me. Okay, so now the dough is going to be very, very sticky. You can use about a quarter cup of flour for kneading purposes. But uh, do not add more than that because you don't want your dough to be thick and hard because your bread will not be soft inside. So, and you're going to knead this dough for about 10 minutes. So when the dough, since it's going to be sticky, you can add some oil in your palm or you can moist with a little water. That will help you to knead the dough properly. So like I say, it's going to be like 10 minutes to get the proper, to get all your gluten well stretched. And okay, now when your dough is ready, when you press it like this, it's not going to leave any mark. It's going to spring back. Okay, so I'm going to put it in a bowl, bowl which has got some oil in it. And we're going to let it rise, do the second rise. Okay, so now this is my second rise. And I'm going to just punch it down. This is the, I love this part. <laughs> so once you punch it down, then I'm going to put it on a flour surface. Now I'm going to divide this into two portions. I mean five portions. Okay. I want to show you two types of bread that I do with this one recipe. This is actually a baguette recipe that I use it for the bread soup balls as well. It works fine for me. So you're gonna um, spread your dough like this. I don't know what you call but uh, and then you're gonna roll it, fold it from the bottom okay and then seal it you know attach it together and then spread it again press it with your hands like you see like what I'm doing to the same dimensions and then you're going to fold it again. And then you're going to seal it. Okay, and I'm going to do the second one the same way. And we're going to keep this for about 15 minutes. And then we're going to do the same process again for the third time. Now with the rest of the dough that I did three portions, I'm doing for the uh, bread soup bowl. You want to pinch it like this to make a nice round circle okay and once it's ready then you're gonna roll it like this you know to make the bottom um, flat and even okay 
and I've got my tray here that is sprayed, uh, sprayed with oil and so I'm just gonna keep it in the um, tray and let it rise for the third time okay so now I want to sh show you something that I do I mean this is a normal process but there's a special cloth for this uh, since I don't have it and I know some of you might not have it I use the normal uh, what we call this is a tea cloth it's cotton and I'm gonna fold it I fold it like this to create pockets so I've done two pockets since I have two two loaves but you can do as many pockets as you want depending on how large your cloth is okay this is basically to maintain the shape of the loaf because you want your bread to rise upwards and not to spread okay you want it upward you don't want it to spread okay so of course you're gonna put some flour because you don't want it to stick and then we're gonna put the loaves of the bread over there okay for the French bread okay so now I'm going for my third time same process this has rested for 15 minutes so I'm doing the same way okay if you want it okay let's do this again and now this time we make sure that we pinch it very well because we don't want the seams to open okay and you're gonna turn turn the seam downwards and keep the good looking side upwards now if you want it longer then you're gonna roll it with your hands and make it longer but then my tray is not that long big so I'm just gonna stick to the standard size so I'm not rolling it okay so now I'm ready to put it in my cloth and you just wanna put it in there and uh, make sure that uh, the seam side is at the bottom okay and where once you've put both the bread both the loaves you wanna make it stand upwards uh, you know and the cloth is big enough to make your loaf covered okay so I'm gonna continue this with the second one okay so now this has risen just scroll my 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 balls my soup balls and then we're gonna egg wash them so I've got my oven ready it's heating up at 425 Fahrenheit and while I'm heating my preheating the oven I have got a tray of hot water of water that's of course gonna be hot I'm trying to create a steam there that is gonna help my bread be crusty outside and soft inside okay so now I'm ready to put this in the tray uh, there is a special tool that they use but I don't have it so I normally just gently roll it out and there you go okay simple okay and I'm gonna do the same way for the second one so the bread will be baking at um, 425 Fahrenheit for about 20 to 25 minutes but if you feel you need more color you may go ahead and add more few minutes couple of minutes depending on your oven okay so you want to do this with a sharp knife because you don't want to press it down you know you don't want to add pressure while you're scoring your bread okay so that's it and uh, it's gonna go in the oven and uh, of course we have to egg wash too and if you don't have eggs you can do milk you can do oil if you want um, olive oil you can do butter you know <coughs> so now as you can see here my steam from the water and um, there goes in my bread like I say this is gonna create that special crust that we are looking for the crispy and hard crust okay so here my soup bowls are ready and uh, you can here this is supposed to have this hollow sound and we do have it okay of course uh, these have been rested they are cooled so I'm ready to 
make an insertion. I'm using this, I usually use them for every any kind of soup that I want, but today I have got some chili and my kids love it, love the chili in the bread bowl. This is a meal on its own. You don't have to do much, okay? And um, we eat both. We eat the, the bowl and we eat uh, the stuffing that I took it out, okay? So that's it, and um, I do have the recipe of the chili. If you're interested, you can try this. And do let me know how you like it or how maybe you don't like it. It's okay. We all have different uh, taste buds. And uh, okay, so for the um, for my baguettes they look perfectly beautiful and they have the same hollow sound and but uh, make sure that uh, you let them rest for 10 minutes before you s cut into it as you can see mine they are very hot but I have to go out and I know when I get back this is not gonna be there's gonna be no bread at all so I've got all the textures that I'm looking for. I've got it crispy and crunchy outside and I've got it very soft inside and I've got the air bubbles from the fermentation that I created. And uh, it's not much, I could have done more. So thank you so much for more recipes. Please visit me at Aroma of Zanzibar.